Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's your brother in Christ, Diamond Dustification, from YouTube again. And I've tried to make this video several times over, but I'm having much difficulty keeping it structured because I have so much to say, and it's rather spontaneous. I'm going to start out very simple. The title of this video is going to be Fellowship and Hatred, and I'm making this video because I want to encourage many of you who I know have gone through the same exact thing I have. This is not going to be a rebuke video, but I am going to be talking about a very specific individual in this video. I had an argument, and I can't call it anything else last night. Now, I didn't argue back. I said very short comments because I, was, I wanted to remain in the spirit. But I was called a fool, an infidel, a liar, a person that doesn't know scripture and doesn't care about scripture, a person that doesn't preach on obedience and all sorts of other things. And I'm going to save those emails just in case the Lord ever decides that, I'm, that I should make a rebuke video, so that they're all there, always there for everyone to see. I got called all sorts of names and nasty comments. And then when, this, when I confronted this person on it, he said it's a two-way street and justified himself, even though I said nothing of the sort to him, and even though he never even watched the video that he was rebu rebuking, but instead told me to watch a video that aligns with what he believes. There are many individuals like this out there. And they are part of the reason why the Christian body is in such disarray and is beginning to retreat from the love of God in the ascent of obedience because inequity is beginning to abound. Now, it doesn't matter whether or not a person is saved in this particular sense. That is to say, they can contribute to these things, these negative things in the Christian body because they are allowing their pride, their flesh, to get a hold of them and they are refusing reproof. And when they do that, they become a vexation to those around them. They are screaming and hollering, hollering in the center of the church and interrupting the sermons of love, peace, and, con and contentedness in the spirit while claiming to do the Lord a service. And this kind of, kind of thing to a minister and a sheep alike, although we are all ministers, kings, and priests in the Lord, is a vexation and a discouragement. And it, it is indeed part of the reason why I had to retreat from YouTube for a while because it got exhausting to contend with. I, t I asked the Lord two things last night. The first thing I said is, how do you want me to deal with someone who treats me so poorly? And, he s and I opened a random little random page, a rhyme it's called, which opens up a random verse in the Bible. And the verse I got was, forgive whatever grievances you may have. That's to something to that effect. When I decided to make a rebuke video, and I do have a rebuke video made for this person, but I'm not going to publish it, I said, do you want me to publish it, Lord? I prayed in the Spirit. Okay? And I said, if you are insulted, it said, if you are insulted for the name of Christ, rejoice. So I took those two things together and decided against making the rebuke video or publishing it. Brothers and sisters, we are going to encounter people like this many times in our journey, where you give them the scripture that vehemently goes against what they believe and they will not listen. This person believes that a Christian, saved Christian, can apostatize from the faith and undo a spiritual operation that God has done. Okay? Now, I am not going to sit here and um, rehash the video that I did, uh, the, the previous video that I did, because there's no point. Those of you that are subscribed to me and care about the truth have already watched that video. And if you haven't had time to watch that video, don't feel like I'm uh, accusing you there. Those of you that care about the truth will arrive at the truth because the Holy Spirit will lead you there in a humble and contrite spirit. You're, you're searching the scriptures diligently. You want to know what the truth is and you will get there. However you get there doesn't matter. The Lord will get you there. Okay? But this person has expressed to me and shown me that he doesn't care about the truth. And I know this for a couple of reasons. I blocked him last night, which is what prompted this argument over email, because he came in there and posted verses against the video without having watched the video. And I know that he didn't watch the video because he posted verses that I talked about in the video and didn't even try to address my, what, I, what the Holy Spirit has shown me about those verses. And yet at the same time, he links me to channels that come against eternal security while claiming to be a believer of eternal security himself. He's going to people that have not the discernment of the Spirit. Because if you deny eternal security, you're denying the gospel. Okay, it's as simple as that. Why? Because eternal security accompanies the promises of God that were granted unto us. If you are not eternally secure, here is what you are saying. 
Jesus Christ did not pay the full penalty for my sins, and I must contribute to my salvation. If you don't believe in eternal security, that is what you are saying. You are saying that you must do something to keep yourself saved, and you are denying the gospel by your works. He wants me to go to people that have not the spirit to interpret and listen to their interpretations, and he himself is doing the same. And he wonders why he is being tossed to and fro on this subject. Another thing that I will say about this is that the wider Christian body, the self-proclaimed Christian, the wider world, believes that we must continue in the faith or lose our salvation. And if you have a belief that aligns with the wider world, you ought to be concerned because we are a small remnant here. Those, that, those of us that truly believe and trust in Jesus Christ. The natural man, however, receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. There are deeper meanings to what it means to continue in the faith, and I can prove that with three verses. The first is Hebrews 13.5. <clears throat> Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The le reason it says it twice there is because they both mean different things. What, is, what am I talking about? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. When he says, I will never leave thee, he is saying that he will never leave thee of any reason of his own. He will never leave you. He's not going to decide one day that you sin too much and therefore he's done with you and cast you out. Because he will in no wise cast out those who come to him. He is not going to forsake you for any reason either. For anything that you have done. Because you cannot be separated from the love of God once you have been grafted into the body of Christ. Only the wicked will be cut off, but you are preserved forever, brothers and sisters. He forsaketh not his saints, they are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The Lord loveth judgment. You know how I know that's talking about the saints that are still alive in their natural bodies here on this earth? Because it says the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. That's the tares among the wheat. But we are preserved, and that means that we are preserved. You know what preserved means? It means kept, watched over, guided, protected, kept alive, preserved. That's what it means, and it is relevant to our salvation now. The wider body believes the surface level interpretation of continuing the faith. They read it once, and they believe they understand it just like that. I did not accept that interpretation for many reasons. First of all, because it didn't harmonize the rest of the Bible. It doesn't match up with Hebrews 13.5, Philippians 1.6, Philippians 2.13, and many, many hundreds more verses. But it, it took a long time for the Holy Spirit to guide me to the truth of it. It took, he did not, he decided that I needed to wait before, before revealing those things unto me, to mature more in the faith. And that is fine. Because he guided me to many wonderful assurances that proved to me that I was wrong about what I was beginning to suspect those verses meant. And I realized there was deeper spiritual meanings that the Lord was revealing to us. <clears throat> and once I understood those deeper meanings, it helped me put, as put aside the fear I had so that I could walk in fear and trembling. See, I don't want to have the unhealthy slavish fear of God, like I'm going to lose my salvation and I'm walking on a tightrope all the time. But rather, the trem I want to tremble and rejoice. I want to rejoice over my salvation and rejoice in the hope that has been stored up for me and walk in obedience to Christ, and I have. That's what I want. And I don't want it for my, just myself, but for you. And that's why I contended with this person so long, because I want him to be in the same place, but he doesn't want to watch my videos or read my content, content or comments to him. And there's nothing I can do or say to a person like that. And there's nothing you can do or say either. Brothers and sisters, it's easy to cast out a blatant heretic that shows up on your channel and calls you a fool. But it's hard to cast out someone you've called a friend. It tells us that we must forgive 70 to, until 70 times 7, which is essentially, you know, never lose your forgiveness. But I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters. You can forgive without having any further correspondence with somebody. You don't need to allow somebody to set up a pulpit in your church or your ministry. You don't need to allow somebody to continuously discourage you every time you encounter them, to, to come against you with law and legalism, and to say that you're wrong without even giving you the opportunity to show them how they, they themselves have contradicted the scripture. 
pride, the pride of the flesh can rise up in a Christian's life even if he is saved. And what it does, the pride of the flesh goes before a fall. And a fall in this particular instance is somebody that is going to hit the hit rock bottom and find himself burning all the bridges that he thought he had built and was building. And if he doesn't hit that rock bottom, he's going to hit... Well, he's going to be, let's just say he's going to find himself at the judgment seat of Christ, losing many rewards. Why didn't you watch this video? Why did you accuse this person without hearing the matter out? For that is a folly and shame unto you as it is now. This individual has no interest in listening to what we have to say, and there are many like him in the world. You will, they will tell you that they believe in eternal security, but once saved, always saved. That's the term we use, the term. Always means what it means. You understand? Just as continue means what it means, but we'll get to that. Why did these people claim to believe in once saved, always saved, and then they say unless or but? This is kindergarten logic. I could explain this to a kindergartner, five years old. Square peg, square hole, round peg, round hole. And he would get it. But yet these people will look you right in the face, men that are 40 years old sometimes, and tell you, I believe in eternal security, but you can lose your salvation. That is a sentence that makes no logical sense. And I don't understand why I have to sit up here and explain it to people that are older than me. I don't. Where is the wisdom? Where is the, where is the, the, the patience and contriteness and truth of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ? Where is the willingness to learn, teach, and exhort your brothers and sisters and from your brothers and sisters? Where is the willingness to accept that it is God that leads us unto truth and not man? It is very telling that these people come to us and they direct us towards videos that agree with them. And then they make comments that about scripture that we have already talked about and pretend that we've never discussed them and that we ignore them because they don't watch our videos. It's as simple as that. You can't reach a person like that and they can discourage you because their inequity will abound. That's not just talking about the lost world. That's talking about the inequity even among Christians who are biting and devouring one another. You know, our Christian body today looks like a scene right out of an action movie. Let's, let's use Batman, for example, because why not? It's the first thing that came to mind. Batman versus Bane. You remember that big scene at the end? Some of you probably do if you watched it. Big hundreds of people are brawling in the street. And I swear, sometimes when you walk into... A, the wider church body, even the grace community sometimes. That's what it looks like. And it's like, how is anybody going to find salvation in there when they look out at the world and they see a devastated world, but yet there's more peace to be found in their atheist friends than in the church body, which is, which is unwelcoming and filled to the brim with people that are contentious in devouring one another and can't agree on nothing. We are to forgive until 70 times 7, but that doesn't mean we must allow these things to continue in our lives and to continue to vex us. I have forgiven this person. I hold no ill will toward him. That's all there is to say. But the Bible tells us we must continue in the faith because God cares about those within his churches. He cares about the world. That's why he died. He sent Christ to die for the sake of the world, for God so loved the world. So he wants to warn people that have not laid hold upon the upon salvation. John 8 is a good example. I've showed this off before. Many of the Pharisees believed on Jesus Christ, but in what capacity? Some There are some that believe for a time, but in time of temptation fall away because they do not continue to become on, to become doers of the word. Now notice that it said that these Pharisees are not yet set free. And whosoever commit a sin is the servant of sin. So they are not set free because they are still the servants of sin. That's not true of a saved believer. We see that in Romans 6. A servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. You know what that's telling us? That's telling us that those that are a part of the body of Christ will abideth forever. It, it, it points towards John 15. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. We are not servants of the bondwoman, but of the free. <coughs> we are not merely Abraham's seed in mouth and lip service, seeking to kill Jesus because his word has no place in us. His word does have a place in us. 
We have continued on to become doers of the word, and therefore we have become his disciples. We have become his saints, because we have laid hold upon the truth, and that, and he is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. You see, the word continue has more spiritual condemnations than these people give it credit for. They read that word and they want to quibble over the carnality of it, what the meaning of the English language says it means. But they don't want to quibble over, this, over the spiritual side of it, over the meaning, the deeper layers and meanings here. Now, I know that there's a danger of apply, overly applying deeper meaning to Scripture as well. You can go too far in the other direction. But the reason that we must be open our eyes here, and with all Scripture, in fact, is because if we believe that we can fail to continue in the faith and apostatize and lose our salvation, then we come against the scripture. Okay? Because that's not what the scripture says. It says we are preserved forever. And I'm not going to go on a tangent, like I said, and discuss all the verses all over again, because I have already done it. And I don't need to do it again. We do not, we want to take heed that we do not have an evil heart of unbelief. Not a heart, an evil heart of belief that turns into unbelief. Hebrews 3.12. They didn't enter into his rest because their faith, they, the word preached didn't profit them because it was not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Therefore, let us therefore fear, lest any of us should seem to come short in the same way. Examine yourselves. That's all Paul meant. That's all pa John meant. That's all James meant. The works of God is that we believe on the one whom he has sent. Faith without works is dead. Work the works. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? John 6, 28. This is the work of God that you believe on the one whom he has sent. And greater works than he shall he do, because I go unto my Father, said Jesus elsewhere in the Bible. I don't just believe the Catholic and the worldly definition of what those verses mean be, uh, by, from people that are natural and have no idea what the gospel even is. I could show those verses to any atheist and they would give me the same exact interpretation that this young man gave me last night. In fact, I have done that. That is what they say it means because they read it, they have no spiritual eyes because it is spiritually discerned and they say, you can lose your salvation because you have apostatized from the truth. But the thing about it is, is that we will never apostatize because anybody that does is manifesting that he didn't have the truth in the first place. They read 1 John 2.24, but they leave out 1 John 2.18-19. through 19. Same thing when they read Timothy, when it talks about those who shall depart for, for a doctrine of demons and devils. Brothers and sisters, do not let yourself be vexed by these kind of individuals and continue to encourage and uplift one another. I know that the world is waxing worse and that even the most basic and simple things that you, we used to take for granted are becoming distant memories now. There is no peace because the world has rejected the Lord and they are casting him behind themselves. And the, and the wider Christian body is in turmoil because the wheat is being separated from the chaff. And because of that happening, many baby Christians are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, and some of those baby Christians are puffed up in pride and would rather bite and devour their brothers and sisters than, than humbly, come, humbly come to learn of the Holy Spirit, than to discuss Scripture with a, with a contrite and, and simple heart and to be gentle about it. And those kinds of individuals, coupled with what's going on in the world, cause inequity to abound and the love of many to wax cold. And I'm here to tell you not to let that happen to you because it almost happened to me. I have become very jaded and very impatient because I'm so tired of arguing about things that are so basic that I feel like I could have better luck explaining it to a class of kindergartners than the grown men that I encounter here on YouTube and elsewhere. Now keep in mind, I'm not talking about any of you, my subscribers, that are truly seeking after the things of the Spirit and want to learn. But I am talking about these men that have flooded my email with contentious debates, flooded my, my, my videos that they never watched with the same verses that I discussed in the very video and then claim I never discussed those verses. And I'm just tired of it. These men are not to be heeded unto. Reject a heretic after the first and second admonition, for he is condemned of himself. And that is true even of somebody that's saved. He's not condemned if he is saved in the sense of losing his salvation but he is condemned in the sense that he is going to allow his prideful flesh to cause him to lose reward and be chastised in this world and the next to come. And that's all there is to it. 
until such time as these people showcase a genuine repentance that is lasting, because this person has said sorry to me at least 40 times, and it never lasts. I want to talk to you, and then five minutes later, you worthless infidel. And I don't have time for that. I'm not going to discuss scripture with somebody until they show me that they can discuss that scripture in a meaningful way to the kingdom of God that will be beneficial to themselves, to me, and to others. We're not going to go, we're not going to jump several levels past. First, you have to show me that you live up to the standard of a minister in the first place, that you can actually have a discussion. Because being shouted at on a live stream is not something I'm interested in. Being shouted at in a private stream of some kind is not something I'm interested in because I don't need that kind of discouragement. I have never ignored verses within the Bible or ignored the context of the Bible. And anybody that wants to say that I have is more than welcome to take my videos and dissect them and showcase how I have done that. But you better do it in a way that gives me the opportunity to, to explain myself because many people that have, that have played my videos do not actually allow me to finish a sentence before they pause the video and say what they think I was saying when they do have no idea what I was actually saying because they don't realize that my videos are continuations. Want, you know, yes, that's the way my channel is. I expect everybody to be watching all of my content. Okay? And I know that that's not feasible for some of you. That's okay. But if these people want to come and challenge my ministry, the ministry that, well, not even my ministry, but God's ministry, it's not mine, then I expect them to know what they're talking about and to have watched the videos they take issue with, but they don't. They don't even watch the ones they take issue with, let alone the ones prior and, and after. How can I argue or, or, or come to any conclusion with somebody that like that, that only listens to what he wants to hear? You know? And you are in the same position, brothers and sisters. Love one another. Do not bite and devour. But come to agreements in those things that can be agreed. I'm not saying that the Bible is an opinion piece. It's not. The Bible has one meaning. <clears throat> God did not give us multiple meanings. <clears throat> he is not the author of confusion. It means what it means. But that must be spiritually discerned. Not carnally. Quibbling over the meaning of words instead of looking at the spiritual. Yes, sometimes we must look into the meaning of a, of a word spiritually so that we can better grasp what it's saying. And yes, the word continue in the Bible can mean just that, continue. It does. But there are deeper spiritual meanings there that per pertain to your salvation and that of others. And it is a f wonderful encouragement when you see those verses, not a discouragement. You don't need, you are not God. And if you trust Jesus Christ to have saved you, then trust him also to deliver you, deliver you. We are here to spread a message of hope, not to try to sit on the throne. And yes, that message does include walking in obedience and trying to mature as a Christian. It's in the Bible, therefore we know the message includes that. But we are not here to try and do God's job and preserve the saints or ourselves. We can rest in Christ. And when you rest in Christ, everything else flows from that simple foundation including your obedience, because you're resting in the hope that has been secured for you by Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. And that hope abounds and sheds abroad in your heart to love and love and contriteness and the fruits of the Spirit and gospel within. And when you have that, when you're aligned with that and you're not quenching it, then all the things that these men think they're doing for you actually start to happen. You see, these many of these people come from a good place, but what they preach is contrary to doctrine. And therefore, what it does is it puffs up your flesh and hurts your walk with God instead of helping it. They are the ones that preach a license to sin while claiming that we preach a license to sin because they preach the strength of sin, which is the law. We are not under the law. We are under grace, the grace of God. God bless.